uh, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to be here. It's been heartfelt to kind of hear all your stories and what you guys have been going through. Um, I normally don't get to know like such a wide range of people and what they're going through. It definitely helps me to be a better physical therapist, knowing like what struggles you guys go through. So I hope this will kind of help you guys just kind of explain the role of what physical therapy is and when it can basically help you guys too. Um, just my background, I did my master's in health science from the University of Indianapolis and I specialized in neuro. I moved here about two years ago and I did my doctorate recently in neuro too. I currently work as a physical therapist in the Dominican outpatient rehab in Tennessee and um, I work with a lot of patients with neurological disorders and vestibular and I do the exoskeleton too if you guys have heard so and the pool, just a little background. And I, I'm not here to promote anything, uh, any of my program, it's just uh, to help you guys out. Uh, so basically what is MS? I'm not gonna spend a lot of time because I guess a lot of you know, but there are some people like you. So I'll just go through a little bit, uh, just so that you, not overwhelm with a lot of information, but just that it affects your brain, your spinal cord, the optic nerve. And the big thing to remember is that it's gonna affect each one of you in a different way, just because um, it depends on which part of your brain, uh, which nerve is damaged, so it's gonna present in a different way. And that's the big thing is whenever you guys do a Google research on MS or things like that, it is sometimes overwhelming to see like there's so many symptoms out there, but just to know that you're not gonna have it all. You might have one of them. It's good to know, but not to be too overwhelmed and depressed that, oh, I could get this, I could get this along. Everybody is gonna go through a different levels of progression or you know how their disease will go through. So just, it's good to have that information and be aware, but not being too overwhelmed with it. Because it's easy to, in today's age, when you just put it in Google, there are like so many different things that come up and you don't know what to trust because there's such so many things out there. Um, some of the symptoms that, um, which you might have been experiencing, and again, this is just a brief category. The only thing what I wanna mention is what can PT help with, like the fatigue you could get or the weakness or the mood swing or the mood or the changes. And the big thing to remember, which I was hearing through the room too, is about the cognitive changes. It's the difficulty with remembering things there are speech therapists out there who can help you out with that. And also with any troubles you have with your daily activities, there are occupational therapists too, which um, would definitely help you kind of guide through that process and tell you some strategies which could help cope with some of those symptoms. Um, and then walking and balance difficulties or bowel and other issues. So then the role of PT. So when does PT come in? It will help to improve your strength, your endurance, your balance, decreasing the spasticity, or, or to put it in the right way, managing it in a better way, like having a stretching program, which will make sure that your spasticity is much under control or you're better able to deal with it. And then base, the most important thing is kind of coping with the fatigue that you experience too, because that's the key. There's a big research out there about fatigue-induced weakness. So when, if you push yourself to a limit, it's like too much, the next day you're gonna feel it and you're gonna feel that weakness. And so just being aware of your limits and which could change. You could be having a new normal now and just knowing that this is my end point. I always tell my patients that just imagine a scale from zero to 10, zero being you're not tired, 10 being you're very tired, Keeping yourself between five to six is a good range. If you feel like it, you do something, you're pushing at like eight, nine, you cross that limit for yourself, and then you're gonna feel that weakness maybe that day or the day after, and then sometimes it's just not worth it. So always like trying to monitor your fatigue with any activities. Um, and then some of the exercises that helps it's hard for me to kind of generalize what exercise will benefit just because everybody of you will be presenting differently. But um, some things that help are the endurance training, the walking, the bike, 
especially early in the morning if you feel like you know you're really tight and you know it's hard for you to get going the bike definitely helps to kind of reduce that muscle tightness that you feel um, something with trending to really important again is that fatigue um, I'm stressing that so much is because it's hard for you to gauge how much is too much and that you probably will learn from more doing exercises and coming to PT and knowing what is your limit. And I've often told, again, my patients to do like an activity log. What that means is like you kind of plan a little bit ahead of time. Sometimes it will work and you might have days it might not. But even if it works like 90% of the time, it's still a good thing. So you, if you feel like you have to do the A, B, C, D things, you just plan ahead that way you're taking a little rest breaks in the middle. So you're not pushing yourself to the limit where you're gonna be like so tired the next day. And that really works well with patients with having that activity log. It's just a reminder for you, you know, like what, what am I supposed to do today? Like they have to go to grocery shopping or do the, you know, go for a walk or things like that. Just adding some rest breaks in the middle will help you not be too overwhelmed with doing everything on one day because then that's harder. And um, it doesn't have to be like you write a whole essay. It just could be like one word, like I have to do this, this, this today. And then as you do this for a while, you will get an idea of how much am I doing? How much is too much for me? Am I doing a lot on one day? Am I doing like, I'm just going grocery shopping for hours <coughs> on Monday or you know, or is it possible for me to kind of split it out during the week if I'm having a lot of free time in the middle or later on? Or can I delegate it to somebody, you know? So just getting an idea of your fatigue is the key. And that will definitely help you guys. But if you guys go to a gym by yourself, just be aware that that strengthening that you're gonna do, just keep it within that fatigue level too. And have somebody initially give you like a guided exercise program so you know your limits and how to progress it. Um, then the balance and coordination training, just to kind of work with having issues, if you're having issues with your balance and you're having a lot of falls or you're in a different stage where you have experienced like, oh, I'm just, I'm noticing that I'm falling like two or three times and I'm having a little trouble with the balance. We can definitely help you with that. Um, the exploited exercise. So um, that's again, the new research that shows that pool therapy is really good for patients with MS. It helps to kind of relax those muscles. The buoyancy of the water basically helps. So you're the deeper end, you're in the water. It's just nice to not be afraid that you're gonna fall. So it's a good place to stretch out. Also, I can put you in positions like you'll be with the noodles on the stomach, which is hard for you sometimes to get on the table, like on a mat table. Um, or like working on some of the balance things again with the buoyancy that the water is going to help you but the good thing is even though you're in the water whatever you do in there is going to help you off the land the thing that you want to remember though is you're not going in like a heated pool zone you want to keep it like 80 degrees which is like a therapeutic temperature range because with ms you want to be careful of the temperature too so you're not going in like a hot tub too much because then that could be like a lot of temperature if you can monitor the temperature, that's good. But just keeping that within the warm range is the key too, because otherwise you don't want to have like a flare up with being in too much heat. It seems like, yeah, if it's really cold, then I will just kind exactly. of Exactly. And that's the thing. So just ha so that 80 to 85 is like a good therapeutic range that they found, which helps a lot with just kind of relaxing those muscles sometimes, which are hard for you to stretch out so much being on the land. Um, so when can PT help? That's a big thing. Like when do you know when to go to PT? There are different stages which everyone goes through. Um, it could be at the time of diagnosis. There's a role of PT at each of these stages. And I will go through one by one at how at each stage is helpful. Just to know that it, it will help you whenever you're just diagnosed, whenever you're in that stable phase where everything is going good, you're in the remission, during or after the relapse, and the progression. So again, it could be, it's a very hard to like categorize like, okay, I'm in remission or I'm going from the different types of MS, you know, 
your wants and relapse and remitting or the disease progression it's very you never know when you're going from one to next and that's kind of why just knowing that you could have help at each of these stages um so to begin with at the time of diagnosis how does it help educating you what's out there that's the key i feel like if you if you don't know how i could be helped it can be overwhelming to just have the diagnosis it's definitely scary because this is something new for you and if you don't have enough information like i said you could be misled too you know because there's so much out there now that it's hard to know whom to believe in and there's so many different resources out there um and also because you had a diagnosis there's definitely some symptom that you have presented with it could be very different everybody starts out differently it could be the balance it could be the dizziness or the vision or anything and there's a treatment for each of those the earlier you start the better you're able to deal and cope with it um and then the basic which is most important is, is teaching you the energy conservation techniques right from the beginning what i kind of explain you with making sure that you're planning your activities you're taking rest breaks and that's the key if you start sooner and if you know that this is you know it's a this is how you want to do ahead it's easier to get that in the routine set up too um in the remission of stable phase so um i refer to those as tune up what i mean by that is um you when you come for pt you're coming usually because there's something going on with you and then you do it you're pretty good you're discharged from therapy and then um it happens that you know i send you home with the home exercise it's easy to fall off the wagon now there's nobody asking you are you doing your exercises so it's easy to not do them too and so what i always tell my patient is come back to me check with me in 6 months how that helps is is just i'm checking back with you is what's going on it doesn't have to be at that point i'm doing like 10 sessions it could just be like four sessions can i review in your home exercise program is everything going fine is there a change the idea behind that is that you're catching the problem before it happens if you're kind of slowly noticing that Maybe I'm having a little issue with my foot, or I'm dragging that foot. It's a small thing, but you'll be like, "Well, it might just be like I'm progressing, or just I'm just noticing it." But it could be fixed. You could have a brace and not have a fall from that. So the that's kind of why I, even if you were in that stable phase, just kind of tuning up, just doing a reassessment, just seeing where you are at in six months from after you've been discharged too. and then during or after the relapse so um during the relapse just kind of working on things which are affecting you you could be getting the treatments um just addressing the symptoms is there a need for a system device at that point if you know your symptoms have gone worse to just make sure that you again you're not having a fall just kind of assess addressing your assessing your balance at that point and seeing if that relapse has done anything that might make you you know more susceptible to falling or things like that so just evaluating the need whether we need to use any device just to make sure you're safer or if we need to brace like do you need like a foot brace or things like that to help you lift that foot better are you dragging the foot what's the change basically and addressing it and after the relapse it would just be like okay this could and many times it could be that nothing has changed many times it could be that some of it has changed for you and then what's that new change what's your new normal and how do you deal with it at that point yeah um would we if we did start needing an aid um or temporarily would we be able to come to you with that aid and and you show us how to use it physically therapeutically to make sure we're Totally. It, right? And yeah, totally because it's the technique how you use it. It could be a walking stick or and we can kind of discuss that too what might be best for you, you know. Mm-hmm. It could be that the cane or you could do better with a walking stick or a walker if you need to, whatever it is. You know, it's just showing you which device could work best for you at that point. Uh-huh. But I would have to evaluate you to kind of see where you're at with it. And then showing the technique because sometimes it's it's hard if you have never used it. Like how would you use it? Am I doing it right? So totally. Cool. Yeah. 
and then make the progression and if um if that if you're in that phase it's just if you need like a standing frame if it's hard for you to stand for too long if it's hard for you to come to the standing position we do have a mobility clinic which can help out or um if you need a wheelchair or things like that just to know that you can get a customized wheelchair if need be which is way better than getting a rental one which is not your size you don't want to get pressure sores or things like that so just knowing that you have that resource out there too which is a mobility clinic where they evaluate you they customize the wheelchair or a standing frame based for you the standing frame um some insurance cover it some don't so we'll go through that if you see it but there are definitely options out there for you guys to know that if you're in that phase and there's a need that is getting hard for you to move around there is a mobility clinic which I would definitely recommend than getting a rental chair because then it doesn't fit right and then it's just very hard to move around with it. Um, and then again, managing your symptoms at that point too. If there are things that are going harder for you, we can definitely address those changes. So some things, and I kind of went over with the activity lock, but there is like an ice vest too. I don't know if you guys have used it or heard about it. If you're a person who gets overheated too much and then your symptoms get really hard to manage, especially with the heat wave that we had, there's like an ice vest that you could get to, which kind of helps you not get that body temperature so high. And sometimes that helps with not having that symptom too much. Or many patients get overheated when they exercise too much. So just having that on there when you're exercising could help it too. And then, um, Many of the patients, like they were describing like the tingling or numbness in the hands. And if you're cooking, you don't want to cut yourself with it. That could happen if you're not feeling your hands. So there are like these weighted spoons, which you can get even on like Amazon, things like that. The idea with that is that the weight helps you to realize that I have something in my hand. So it helps your brain, what we call proprioception, is that it helps to know that I have something in the hand and that helps you not touch your finger or things like that. Even with the tremors, it helps, or just that ability to know that I have something weighted definitely helps. And that's something even when we use, I use weights a lot for patients who don't know where their feet are, you know, if there's numbness in the feet, that weight gives your brain an extra feedback that I, I'm on my feet, or, you know, I'm using my hands, which will help you not touch the finger too. Any questions? Is does it work the same? Like, is there like a like I know the cold season's coming, and I know we're all basically just like Goldilockses. We need perfect temperatures. Mm -hmm. um, would if like if we were doing like exercise outside? I mean. Should, it, should I be wearing like warmer stuff even though I get hot? Like, I, I, I guess the temperature thing has me a bit concerned. Um, mm -hmm. Is it like, should I be going out for long walks? Oh, I guess I just kind of answered my own question. Or should I be going to the pool where it's warmer, where I can stretch? I mean, definitely, again, it depends on every individual, but usually like if you walk in like an extreme heat, sometimes mm -hmm. those symptoms can feel triggered. Like you might feel like, oh, I'm getting fatigued a lot too fast. So then maybe choosing the time when you go for walks, you know, not going like 12 o'clock, just go in like in that evening five or six when it's not like that hot for you. So you're not, you know, on purpose doing it to yourself. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I guess that is kind of my fault. And and you you work at a facility that takes Medi-Cal, right? Like you, you guys take every we kind of- We do take CCA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's everybody. Totally, yeah. That, that's very cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, uh, my shoulders are really starting to feel yeah. well on me, uh -huh. and it feels like like I don't really even have the strength to build them up at this point. But I just I'm sort of, sort of more focused on how do I not injure them more. Um, and so is that something that you think would be better addressed with a PT or an OT? Um, so you can get a referral to PT first. I feel like is there is there a pain? Okay. Yeah, so we need to address that pain first and kind of building the basically the scapular muscles. You transfer with your hands at this point. And that's something like that overuse does that too. So we'll definitely show you some techniques to kind of bend in that. And then if at that point if I feel like, well, 
you're having trouble with your daily activities? Do you have any like with skiing or um, like buttoning or tennis? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't butt without watching, but um, you know, there's a lot of things that I, that I had to come back on or do differently. Yeah. Um, and and transfers are, tr you know, it's like I feel like I'm like on the precipice there of like not being able to do it myself anymore. So. Yeah. So we can definitely work on those techniques, and then when when we just ask a couple of questions, just kind of assessing how much your daily activities are affected, and if they are, like you're saying, we. Can just we can do it like an internal referral to occupational therapy too, mm -hmm. and then we see that oh well I think you might benefit from OT too, and sometimes we catch it which helps a lot mm -hmm. because then you're kind of working on different things but you're using your insurance wisely too so I'm not doing everything for you you're still not kind of flooding things mm -hmm. so then one can focus on the shoulder one can kind of focus on your daily activities kind of seeing if there's anything new out there and many times like I've had. I have referred patients to OT just in general for MS2 because then it just helps them to know if there are any cool devices out there which could help you, you know, and there are so many now that if they can make your life easier, totally. And if she could do like a session or two, she can assess, she can only evaluate too if she feels like she can give you some tips, she doesn't have to continue. So there is never really like, oh, I shouldn't have gone here. Mm -hmm. so. And can I just call um, the rehab clinic directly and make an appointment? I don't have to go through the primary care. You do need a referral. I do need a referral. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> that just we are still not direct access, mm -hmm. but you can still need a referral. But then once you get the referral, you can definitely just call in and check in too. Okay. That's where your referral is. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I did find out that. You're one of the few neuro PT clinics in the country. There are very few, yes. correct? So we should be using that as a real, <laughs> we have a real advantage in this community because there aren't a lot of outpatient neuro PT clinics in the country. Mm -hmm. And she has a lot of really specific things that will help you adapt and help you whatever stage you're at. I mean, you can, it doesn't really matter whether you're primary progressive, relapsing or remitting or secondary progressive there, you can make changes at any stage that you're at. Yeah. Yeah. It's a cool clinic. Yeah. yeah it's really cool. <laughs> it's a nice, yeah. it's a very different setup, which mm -hmm. is not there in every city. And also like, I think after you are done with PT, I usually like to tell you guys to go one of those classes and we can always talk about which one you might benefit from. There are these pep classes that take place or you could be going out in the community, going to senior fitness or going to the pool, doing one of those pool programs. Um, the idea about that is you're just doing something or the other once a week where you're having like somebody supervise you and tell you, you know, and they can catch things too, like, oh, I think they're noticing some change, maybe go back to PT. So you're kept in the loop that way, that way you're not, like it's mm -hmm. it's quicker to catch things when you're in the loop than when you're on your own off the back end, just not knowing when is the right time to come back. Yeah. How do we ask our, um, prime or our doctor who's going to refer us for, um, for what we need, because I feel like I every time I go see my doctor, I want more PT, but then I never hear. Uh, yeah, like I don't hear, feel like I um, get called for the refer for the referral. Okay. Just yeah. follow up and see yeah. if they have because they will be a phone number that you can right. call. If they don't call you, they say, yeah. "Oh, if they don't call you by such and such day. Call them directly." Right. That yeah. you get my referral and they say yes or no, and if they say no, you get back to your doctor saying I still right. didn't get my referral. Exactly. Yeah, yeah that's pretty much it. Okay. You, you can call the clinic because if we get a referral, it's saved right. in one of the files, uh -huh. and so if they have it, if not, then probably the okay. doctor has not sent it either. Right. So yeah, check with it. But you yeah. should be able to, and it's been a while. Mm -hmm. You it's be yeah. <laughs> yeah. And well, what I just want to say is one of your, as, as not, I didn't think I would benefit from physical therapy because I was operating on a basic level, but like you, you showed me stuff that I didn't even realize, like the brain is kind of amazing on like some of the stuff that my body was doing in order to protect me, but actually was causing me like longer term damage. Like I didn't realize that 
I wasn't really looking left and right when I was walking because it made me dizzy. And so I was never really doing that. And and then, you know, getting more confident and being able to look around and and that's helped me feel more safe going on walks at night. Like because there was a point there where I was feeling really uncomfortable because I kind of you were coming on my left, like mm -hmm. I was like Zoolander, couldn't turn left. Um, and yeah, and I just think that I I'm now a big advocate thanks to thanks mm -hmm. to your work. And I just I didn't really I didn't understand all the stuff I was doing. Like I wasn't even using my knees right. Mm -hmm. I've had these for 32 years. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been using them right. <laughs> like I just didn't know and um, it really had helped and like that pools that they there's like that light bit of compression that you get from being in the water because like I'm always pressing on myself but so I was just kind of like laying in a pool and it just like made my arms feel so much better I just didn't know the pool helps a lot with the what's it called the neuropathic pain like that thing like chanting too which mm -hmm. it just the water is amazing it is it, it really is it, it definitely helps and just being on at it and continuing but what uh, she was kind of mentioning is that sometimes ms affects your middle ear like the vestibular symptom system and it could present like the dizziness or things like that too and there is a treatment so i do vestibular therapy too so there is a treatment which we call habituation so by and you might have not realized our brain is good at helping us. So you might have not realized that you might be compensating by turning your body when you're looking and not turning your head and just to avoid that onset of that dizziness. So it just, mm -hmm. that therapy just helps you to learn that, you know, it, we make you do stuff again and again to train you to say that it's okay for me to turn my head, like stop messing up, so mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, and you made me sit up straighter. I've been sitting up straighter for days. <laughs> Makes me look skinny. She's good. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.